they're ignorant. They're ignorant on salvation. They're ignorant on, you know, on a lot of things. He says, but they are zealous. Just as he was when he was persecuting the church. He had a lot of zeal. I mean, it was a big deal to him. He went out and, and <laughs> traveled and, and did everything he could to persecute the church of God as when he was part of their religion and part of their system. He had that zeal also. He says, yeah, they've, they've got this great zeal. And he, and he looks at it, though, as potential, saying, hey, if we could, if we could get this zeal, if we just get them right, if we just reach them with the gospel, what, man, what, what good could come if we could turn that zeal, as the Apostle Paul is, is evidence of that. Man, he had that great zeal, and once he got saved, he was really able to use that zeal for a good purpose, uh, doing the work of the Lord. You know, verse 3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And, you know, he goes on to explain, they're just believing in works-based salvation. They're trying to establish their own righteousness through the law. Not going to happen. Right. Not going to happen. You need to receive salvation as a free gift, and it's, uh, it's just given to you. And you need to submit yourself unto the righteousness of God. You, mean you need to humble yourself in order to receive that free gift instead of thinking you can earn it and it's all based on your own good works. And he goes on and on here. I don't want to get through the whole chapter. Let's jump down, though, to verse number 8. And the reason why we started in Romans 10, you know, I'm, we're going to be learning lessons from Isaiah and Jeremiah. The reason why we're starting in Romans 10, though, is because there's, so, there's multiple references made in Romans 10 back to Isaiah and back to the Old Testament and back to the prophets regarding this subject here. Verse number 8 says, But what saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And this is an awesome uh, uh, model, if you will, on salvation and how people get saved and that all you got to do is believe he's saying whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved because with the heart man believeth unto righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation which is the model and the pattern that we use when we go out soul winning right we preach the gospel of jesus christ we try to show people that they're sinners we try to show people the penalty for their sin is hell we try to show people that jesus christ paid for that sin we try to show people that all you got to do to be saved is to put your faith in him and believe him we try to show people that hey once you do that it's eternal it lasts forever i mean there is no work involved and then we try to show people that, hey look you want that gift all you got to do is just ask god for it you believe on him Ask God to give you that gift and he'll do it. He's faithful and just to do that for you. He'll give it to you. But you have to receive it. You have to take it. You can understand the gift is there, but you have to take it. And that's the model that we follow here when we are out preaching the gospel. It's exactly outlined here. And, and continuing on, the Bible reads, uh, verse number 11, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Jew. And the Greek, for the same Lord over all, is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And before we continue on any further, this is the reason why I chose to preach on this topic this morning is because, you know, what, I, what is our church all about, Strong Old Baptist Church? It's about preaching the gospel. Amen. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that we believe. There's a lot of things that we believe are important. There's a lot of core doctrines that we hold to very closely and very tightly. But at the end of the day, it's kind of the end game and the purpose of everything. The purpose of getting the sin out of your life, the purpose of all this, is to be a minister and a servant and to reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That really is, that is the focus of our church. That is the lifeblood, that's the heart and soul of this church. Everything else is going to help to be a means to that end. You get sin out of your life, it's going to give you a better testimony. It's going to make you a better servant. It's going to let God use you even more, right? 
You, you get a knowledge and you study your Bible and you study to show yourself approved and you get good doctrine. You know what? That's going to help you be a better soul winner. That's going to help you go out and reach people even better. All of these various things, while they may be multifaceted, there's lots of reasons to do things. You have lots of motivations to do things. You know, you may not want to be chastened by the Lord. You may want to get the rewards. But it all still is going to point to how many people can we reach? How many disciples can we make? How many people can we, can we lead to Christ? That is the goal.